Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Jan Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a Niti Yanni podcast from the southwest of France with a bent phone again. Better? Hi, <laughs> I hope you are well. Thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I am well, it is bright and sunny today. So, yeah, I have three projects to share with you, three little projects. And uh, yeah, so gonna be a quickie, but I have a really cool uh, new design to share with you and two um, works in progress. Um, one is new. And I think that's gonna be about it. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit confused between uh, what I have <laughs> been knitting on and can show you and what I have been knitting on but cannot show you. Uh, projects are <laughs> a bit messed up in my head at the moment. I need to write up a list um, with like what's next and like order my project because I'm just getting a little bit confused. <laughs> I have put some project that I have uh, finished on hold and so I'm just a little bit unsure of uh, what I'm doing exactly and what I plan to share with you on the podcast. But I have three projects and um, yeah, in case you haven't seen it, on my channel I published a project focus video, yay, <laughs> the return of the project focus. It was all about the Favo sweaters by sweater, just one, it, one is enough. <laughs> by Fibre Tales and I have made a whole vlog uh, about making this sweater. It's also uh, a little snippets of uh, the holidays and stuff. Pets and food <laughs> and things. Uh, so yeah, in case you're interested into seeing this progress, this project, um, the video is up on my uh, YouTube as well. Um, so yay! I'm gonna start with the episode. You can find timestamps to all the different sections in the description down below. So if you want to skip anything, feel free to jump ahead. I also put links to everything that I talk about, as well as my social media patterns for sale on Ravelry and my Patreon page. So, yay! I have released a new pattern on Ravelry and I am super excited because I really like it. And it's this lovely beast. So I have shared it uh, at the end of last year as I was knitting on it and it is the Alma Venus wrap. So it is a pretty long lace wrap that is knit in worsted weight um, yarn. So a rather thick, woolly, lovely, warm thing but it has some lace. So it's all looking very chunky, very rustic, very earthy and I absolutely love it. So this is a, a wrap that is uh, very easy to customize. I have used three colors as you can see with different methods of transition between the colors. So you can just stripe some garter stitch or you can alternate one band of lace with another, etc. And basically you can do the wrap in one color, in two colors. You can use a bunch of scrap because you can pretty much knit every lace repeat in a different color. As you can see they are clearly um, stopped <laughs> by these lines of eyelets, which you can choose to leave in, to remove, uh, if you want a different uh, succession. But yeah, basically you can pretty much alternate as often or as little as you would like. So you could also knit it in one color, it would look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but yes, for my version I have used three colors. So the yarn I used is Gilead by Dehehum Natura, so a woolen spun worsted weight. Um, non superwash merino, which is absolutely brilliant for this project. It just gives the lace such a lovely look. You can have, um, you can see my testers project and they all use different yarns. 
So you can also see how it looks in more sleek superwash uh, yarns and it's also very nice and uh, delicate uh, and I believe someone also um, did some fluffy thing so you can go and have a look at that to see different alternative but in a non superwash yarn I really really love how it looks so I started with this color which is poivre blanc so white pepper then this one which is June this lovely soft pink and then I ended it with caramel and yeah it's an easy project if you are starting out in lace uh, if you want something quick because thick yarn big needles super quick to knit if you want something quick something easy something really rewarding because um, the lace as you can see like it's it's not many repeats it's not many stitches and it just has a wow effect instantly so if you're in for that kind of project, this is really, really nice to do. I really had lots of fun knitting it. And my testers, it was really funny because as soon as I started, <laughs> they just um, always showed huge chunks of progress every time. So <laughs> um, that was quite funny how quickly they um, went up, up, up the lace. So uh, all the wrap is surrounded in I-cord edging. So you basically you start with an eye cord cast on. Uh, that is that you knit an eye cord, a long eye cord here, and then you pick up the stitches to start the wrap. Um, there are um, tutorials on this that I've put in the pattern. It's very easy to do. I've written step by step instruction, not a problem. And um, then you uh, basically work an eye cord all along the edges, and you also use an eye cord bind off. I will say that depending on your personal tension, um, you might find that your eye cord is a bit tight at the edges, which I found interesting because I didn't have that problem. I think it depends on the type of yarn that you use, because if you use a yarn that is very slick, the lace will open a lot and it will spread. And if you combine that with maybe you uh, having a, a nod tension in the eye cord bit, well, the eye cord might end up being a bit tight for the lace. So if you find that that is the case to you, for you, um, you might want to uh, make elongated stitches for the eye cord, basically. So you would wrap for one of the three stitches that constitutes the eye cord you could wrap the yarn two three times and that would make the eye cord looser um, I never have that problem most of my testers didn't um, but one of them um, did some tests to see how she could improve her tension because uh, she had that so in case that's um, something you uh, find that happens as well to you whenever you do eye cord edges on shawls um, maybe try uh, doing one elongated stitches and see if that helps you. But I will say that if you use a woolly, airy type of yarn, basically something that's quite light, so that is wool and spun, or maybe that has some um, more hair, basically something that is not too heavy, uh, the thing opens up and drapes really beautifully. So, yay! Um, like I said, very easy to customize. It's quite big, <laughs> but you can basically knit for however much yarn you have. Um, if you do choose to make the exact replica of my uh, sample, um, every time I tell you, you knit X repeats or until you have used that amount of yarn or you have that amount of yarn uh, left, Basically, you can um, check that you're on track so that you use as much yarn as you want, basically. But very easy to customize, very easy to make it thinner, to make it bigger. Um, as usual, with any kind of neck accessory, you can also use a different weight of yarn. It's not that complicated to adapt. You just have to make more repeats and make it longer if it's a smaller yarn or 
less repeats and make it shorter technically if it's a um, bigger yarn but you do you do you uh, really easy to adapt and I just really like it I've been wearing it uh, once we took the pictures uh, because this was photographed in Romania by my uh, really kind and patient boyfriend <laughs> once we took the pictures I was able to wear it over there while it was rather cold and that was so amazing I basically <laughs> was wearing it all bundled up under my coat when we were outside so that um, that was the I'm very cold <laughs> then that was the you guys are overheating your interiors but I'm too lazy to take it completely off so kind of loosening up to not be completely um, like flaming with heat um, and basically the the woolen span thing and the lace aspect of it means that it's it's really warm if you bundle up um, or if it's like just chilly uh, in the house um, but if you just leave it like this sort of as an um, ornamental thing which goes extremely well with my red hoodie right we are peak style here peak style at this moment absolutely brilliant um, but yeah I mean if you just leave it like this it's not too warm it's not gonna make you feel that you're overheating like some superwash yarn may do um, or like if you're knitting something really heavy and really um, dense unlike lace or um, what I usually did when we were staying in or when I was sitting down and I was a bit chilly on my shoulders I just wrapped it like this and it's quite long and so I'm usually I'm not someone who's easily cold but when I'm cold I am cold on my legs for some reason my thighs I feel cold much easier there than on my upper body so to say and so uh, <laughs> it's very long and so well you can't see but basically this is this can lay on my thigh and sort of act as a lap blanket at the same time so that's how <laughs> you will find me if I'm cold uh, basically but um, yeah I absolutely love this project um, let me show you the lace a little bit closer up because I didn't because I'm too excited um, so yay like I said really easy to knit really quick and a good way for you to uh, play around with maybe leftovers or to try and personalize personalize it i kind of like the idea especially with accessories right and shawls i kind of like the idea that you can like that no one can have twice the same one like even if you like you'd have to be really specific uh to copy <laughs> the version of someone else because you'd have to uh, follow their color sequence and stuff and um so yeah let's make it unique basically and this would look so beautiful just all all cream colored like this but uh, yeah basically every section i'm looking i just find oh if it was all like this it would be great but the the combination of them and just this sort of um graphic but gentle transition I really like it and it's I mean it's big enough that when you're wrapping it around your neck you don't really have that problem of trying trying to show enough of it you know you're, you're not uh, trying desperately to showcase every color you know because every color ends up being visible so to say so yay um, that is the Alma Venus wrap. Uh, Alma Venus because Alma Venus. Um, it means um, Venus benefactor. Venus. It's not good Venus. Uh, it's often it's Latin, okay. So and it's uh, um, calling to Venus to the 
goddess. And uh, it's often been translated as a good Venus or nurturing or mother kind of uh, mood Venus, but um, it's, it's not quite that, it's more benefactor or um, yeah, kind and yeah, uh, it's a, oh, this is not a translation podcast. Oh my god, I have, um, like, I've done some broad um, humanities studies. So I have studied uh, literature, uh, foreign languages, uh, history intensively, uh, philosophy and stuff like this, and Latin. And so uh, we were doing um, quite intense uh, Latin translations to French. And so <laughs> I kind of have a, a messed up brain uh, talking about these little details. You don't need to know that. Uh, but anyway, these are the first words of uh, Lucretius, Luc I don't know how to say it in English, basically. Uh, Dererum Natura, so the brand that I use the yarn from is named after the book Dererum Natura, which is, uh, it means of the nature of, of, about the nature of things, which is um, a philosophical kind of metaphysical stuff. Essay written by Lucretius, Luc I don't know how to say it in English, um, ancient Rome stuff. And he starts uh, as all uh, writings <laughs> uh, from that uh, era starts by uh, asking uh, gods for help for his uh, intellectual pursuit. And he asks Venus for help, so he starts by saying Alma, Venus. And I just thought that was really nerdy and posh at the same time, but I kind of liked it. Um, I thought it fitted the... I don't know, I thought it fitted the lace and it was kind of like a, a nice little... Um, uh, oh my god, what's the name in English? <laughs> um, reference to the, to the yarn I used. Um, yeah. So... That is it, and the pattern is now available on Ravelry, I have just put it up for sale, and yeah, you can find it there, it's linked um, under the video, and uh, as a thank you, and in case you need uh, it to be a little bit more affordable for you, and you want it, and you want to knit it now, there is 15% off the pattern with the code Alma Venus. Um, until next Sunday. So yeah, that is it um, for that. I really hope you like it. Uh, I think it's like one of my best staple winter accessories now. Um, yeah, I am really, really happy with that. And yeah, I hope you, you enjoy it and I would be really eager to see a bunch of different uh, versions pop. So in case you you want a quick little thing to finish up the cold season if you're in the northern hemisphere. I don't know why I bother saying hemisphere, atmosphere every time because I never know how to say it. This is terrible. Uh, or if you're in the south, then hemisphere, atmosphere. I don't know. Uh, if uh, you want to prepare for your winter. So, yay! Um, that is it for the pattern that I have just put up on Ravelry. Um, yeah, like I said, all the info uh, is in the description down below. I am going to jump in into works in progress and I am going to share with you my uh, progress on the colorwork cowl that I was knitting on. So this is a colorwork cowl that I am test knitting for a French designer, um, which is Marconnet, uh, and this is it. So I've talked about what it is, the yarn I'm using a lot in the last episode. Basically this is a color work cowl that you knit in the tube and then you're gonna twist it and graft the ends together. And you are using a lace weight or very light fingering weight yarn uh, to make your color work. And I am using Filcolana uh, Saga, so X New Zealand Lamoult yarn which is a very light fingering slash lace. It has about 300 meters per 50 grams 
and it's 100% uh, lamb's wool and it's a lovely color work yarn and so this is what I've done so I think last time I had just done like a little bit know, maybe one repeat I have done a little bit more now so you can kind of see how it's gonna look in the end and I absolutely love it so the original design um, sample is much more colorful than this and is using six contrast colors so basically every stripe one stripe is using a set of blue contrast colors and the other stripe is using a set of reddish contrast color so that's it i am only using three contrast color to have some sort of a neutral version and i really love how it's looking really really nice and yeah it's working up quite fast considering i haven't been able to <laughs> dedicate myself to it completely I have been at the moment quite obsessed with other <laughs> topics in my leisure time uh, and so <laughs> I haven't had uh, the time to uh, knit on it that much but I found that my raw gauge is wrong and basically I won't have to knit as many repeats as she uh, did for the sample so basically I have to knit until it's about 70 75 centimeters long um and so that's what i'm gonna do and uh, i really love how it's look like when you look at it like that it's so beautiful and the gradient between the grays it's really really cool i also keep making mistakes for some reason i don't know why uh, but i had to undo <laughs> a few rows because i forgot to change contrast color or um i um I, me I messed up something uh, and that is even though I did um, write up uh, put up stitch marker between each repeat and so um, yeah I, I had to uh, undo quite a few times the last few rows because I noticed that I had done something silly um, but whenever I do it right it's absolutely beautiful so yeah like I said if I only paid more attention to it instead of thinking of other things that I want to, that I need to think about. I'm gonna get tattoos, basically that's what is running up my head at the moment. Um, well, it's been running up my head for years and years and years. I have just decided to do it finally and to start. So um, yeah, that's what is taking me time away from my personal knitting project. I really like it. I think it's a good um, transition progress project so if you have done um you know like typical modern geometric scandinavian type color work where you have one contrast color um and you would like to venture more into something that looks a little bit more um like lots of colors basically something that looks a little bit more like traditional feral designs so like marie Wallin, like um things like this shetlanders um designs, uh, Susan Crawford, things like this. Um, if you would like to transition from two color stranded knitting to multitude of colors and lots of small, um, small details that repeat themselves and transitioning between one color to another, I think this is a good in-between to familiarize with self, yourself with that because you don't have like this is not by all means a traditional feral <laughs> thing but it, it it has inspiration from it uh in the sense that even if you only have one background color and you don't have the the system of how things should repeat um and how the sequence should be which is quite strict uh if you look at traditional feral rules <laughs> so to say um here you have only one background color instead of a gradient but you do uh, change mm, your contrast color every few rows and so you sort of have that first uh, venture into changing constantly a little bit of colors and making motifs out of technically gradients or some sort of fading or contrasty effects within the same individual motifs and you also have the typical center line here with the darker tone 
and um, yes yeah, so I think it's a good project if you have done color work and you would like to uh, get into multicolored projects or if you um, are a beginner color work knitter but you're adventurous because in a sense it's quite easy you know you don't have to catch floats uh, because it's gonna be inside anyway uh, it's in the round uh, the motifs are not complicated they repeat themselves very in very short span of um, like dim dimension um, so if you are willing to to put a little bit of thought into things uh, even if you just started color work it's not that difficult um, but yeah I really really think it's beautiful it's gonna be so nice it's gonna be so nice but like like I said my gauge is slightly off especially rule wise so um, yeah um, I'm not gonna do all the repeats of the pattern but I think um, I think I have to do like six repeats so that's 12 for me because I'm doing twice the same thing instead of changing colors um, so yeah that is how this is going on and this leads me to my next work in progress uh, which is a new design and if you remember or if you've seen last episode I did mention that the original sample uh, for this design is knitted with La Bienheureuse New Yarn uh, Helix, Helix uh, which is uh, light fingering slash lace weight, 70% uh, goat land, no, it's the other way, 17, 75%, oh my god, 75% Falkland Merino and 25% uh, goat land. Uh, and I did uh, show you that I had some skein of Helix as well because I have been contacted by Amy to design as well uh, with her with that yarn and so I am going to show you a little bit of it <laughs> basically uh, Amy wanted a sweater so I was like much obliged I'm gonna do a sweater and I wanted color work for this because yeah it looks really good it looks really good in color work the colors are so deep and so and the yarn is soft but it has that goatlin treasure which makes it so suitable for color work and for big woolly but still rather lightweight garments and so i wanted to make a full-on color work sweater with color work all over the body and some textural details and so I ventured into making this absolute monster <laughs> so uh, it's gonna be a bottom-up sweater don't hate me it's gonna be big and loose and basically the thing with helix is that if you hold it single it's very fine right it's like lace weight which I'm considering I think I overestimated how much yarn I needed uh, that's the thing because it, it grows quite well so I, you don't need that much yarn like I have okay so my sweater is going to be really big for me what I mean is that it's, uh, it's quite it's going to be a lot of ease for me and uh, so I think I'm knitting a size that's going to give me over a hundred centimeter finished circumference I have knitted the whole body and like half the upper body so I've knitted more than half of my sweater and I'm still on my first <laughs> skeins of each color so well I did use the little skeins that she sent me for swatching first um, but yeah I basically so yeah I used if you think that that's what I have left left I basically used um, one skein I think of each color or at least of the main color I realized there's the there's a stitch marker there so I must have forgotten the stitch lost the stitch marker on my previous project what a catastrophe anyway uh, well I'll replace it later um, but um, I basically I had two options either 
make a sweater in a lace weight gauge. So again, I wanted a color work, super loose, full on color work sweater. So lace weight gauge. Mm -hmm. So I had to double it with something and it may suggest that you can double it with mohair as well if you want or with itself. I'm very curious to how this would look doubled with mohair in a color work motif. I think it would look interesting. Um, but I decided to double helix with itself. So basically I'm using two strands of each color to knit my color work. And this gives me a fingering weight gauge um, in color work. And I really like how it's working. This yarn is really good doubled with itself. It ba basically, I'm gonna close up, it basically makes a whole new thread. It works really well. It's really beautiful. It's, um, it's smooth. There's no problem. It's easy to work on handling the different threads. Um, it's, I think, one of the best yarns that I have used that can be doubled with itself. It's really, really nice. And what I have did, what I have thought about is that since I'm doubling them, I might as well play a little bit with it <laughs> and include uh, texture elements that take advantage of the fact that you are using two threads and two colors. So basically, the sweater is bottom up and you start with the hem that you knit flat. And you knit flat because it's gonna have a split at the back so that's a little detail that I want just one split at the center back of the sweater basically and basically I did seat stitch holding one strand of each color to have that marled effect and this is a textural detail that I'm going to repeat on the sleeve cuffs and this is not finished by the way because oh, so many details, <laughs> there's too many details in that sweater. Okay, let me be uh, organized. Bottom-up sweater. You start with the hem in seat stitch with a marled effect uh, because you're holding one strand of each color. Then you join for the, at the center back, you leave that little split here. Then body full-on color work. Um, I have shown you like the motif, voila, there it is full-on color work at the body. Now, the color work continues here. It's a drop shoulder construction, by the way. Maybe I should have started with that. Drop shoulder construction. You knitted it up here, and then you, you sort of need to split for front and back, but you want to keep knitting in the round, so I have put sticks for the armholes. And I will also put a stick for the neckline, because I want to keep knitting my color work in the round for how high I want the sweater to be. So, that's the general construction. Bottom up drop shoulder with sticks for the armholes and the neckline. Uh, I am doing uh, tutorials for the sticking thing, basically the way I do it and the way you can uh, handle it when it's about sticking armholes and neck, which is, um, I think, more... Um, more of a beginner way to stick, so I think that would be a good thing if you've never stick to try with a construction, not necessarily my sweater, but with a construction like this, because the sticks are shorter, basically, it's just the armhole, and sometimes you have a neckline one, but not necessarily, it depends on how high the color work goes on the shoulder, but if you just have little sticks like this, it's very accessible, it's less intimidating, so yeah, maybe that would be... Um, a good idea and a good way for me to um, explain that you don't need to be scared of sticking. It's like really, it's really simple procedure, and yeah, there's um, there's very uh, little risks if you just follow the steps, and you don't have to stay stuck on it and just be like, I need to, <laughs> I I need to wait because I cannot cut it right now. Um, so yeah, basically, that is the construction of this sweater. Then, 
the sleeves are will be knitted top down and stocking it with the main collar only uh, still holding two strands obviously and the cuffs will have a repeat of that marled stitch stitch and then all the edges so the end of the cuffs and the neckline are gonna be bound off with an eye cord with the main collar and then the, could you see i just wanted to pack things into this design i don't know what got and so since you're gonna have an eye cord neckline an eye cord end of the cuff you're gonna have an eye cord here so later i will basically pick up stitches all around this and work an eye cord in the main color so that it sort of finishes it a bit more in a really clean way it's gonna be super neat i have done swatches and i really like how it looks so it's gonna make the whole sweater like complete because this looks very raw as an ending and so just imagine basically a dark green eye cord here and you, i think you'll see what i mean <laughs> in the sense that it finishes the design so yeah jam-packed design with lots of little techniques but I'm gonna make them accessible. I have started my sticks for the armholes here. You can see. So basically, I just cast on extra stitches, and here I'm knitting the stick. And here's the hole for the armhole. And basically, I will. This is what I will cut later. And yeah. Um, it's going so much faster than I thought. Well, it's definitely a time-consuming design, but when I'm going to block this and I'm going to put it on, I have a feeling I'm gonna have, like, it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare that I'm really proud of myself. Like I have, like, I like what I'm doing most of the time, <laughs> most of the time, but I rarely have a surprise uh, reaction to a finished result of something that I imagined because during the process of making it and, you know, there's always a little bit of a doubt and there's always something that you, you think, oh, maybe I, I sh could have done it that way or I could have done it another way. I'm always satisfied with the result. If not, I would do it again, especially if it's a, one of my designs. I don't want to... I will not sell something I'm not satis satisfied with at the moment. Uh, but I rarely have... Uh, wow, it looks amazing <laughs> and it's better than I thought it would be effect. I had that recently with uh, the sweater I have knitted over the holidays, the blue one. It's, they're all blue. Uh, the, <laughs> the the one I have, I will uh, probably release in spring. One that has little t twisted thing because of the fit of it, which I absolutely love. And this, I think the whole massive color work all over the body and lots of little textural details. I think this is gonna make me a little bit surprised as well of the finished result and I'm really eager to, to see it. I'm also making it uh, with lots of ease, hoping that my mother could wear it because uh, she's always liking the sweaters that I design and she's always like, oh, you make them too small for me. Uh, my mother doesn't have a weird accent like this, but <laughs> my mother speaks English with a very soft British accent, which is quite funny. Um, and she speaks French with a like peasant thousand Western accent in French. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, my mother um, has a fuller bust than I do, and like she borrows all of my shawls and accessories. But the sweater, she's always a bit bummed because she doesn't fit in them. And since I wanted this to be with lots of ease anyway, I thought I would make my sample in the higher end of ease for me so that maybe my mother will wear it and i feel like these colors will look really good on her she's um has a darker skin than i am than i have like everyone on this earth basically but <laughs> yeah 
you don't need to know that. Why am I telling you that? Anyway, um, so it's a big sweater and it's knitting up mm, quickly, quicker than I thought it would. And um, yeah, basically, so it's a sweater that is going to look complicated, I think, but in reality, um, it's just a lot of little techniques for which uh, I always make tutorials, as you know, if you've ever looked at my patterns. But um, yeah, um, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. And uh, the color work itself is simple, uh, short repeats, geometrical, symmetrical thing. Uh, not many floats to catch. Basically, there's just one roll where you need to catch some floats. Um, and yeah, I really like it. I actually adapted the motif, so again, flashing the motif, <laughs> from my Alienor socks. So my Alienor socks are probably one of my favorite socks that I have designed. They're a color work socks that I have released uh, quite a few, a long time ago now. And uh, they have this, uh, a similar motif to that. Um, and yeah, I just, as I was thinking of uh, what I could uh, suggest to Emmy for our collaboration, uh, I thought, hey, that would be really nice to revisit this color work motif. And so that's what I did. So, yeah. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Yes. What I think is interesting with this sweater is that you're holding the yarn double, but you don't have to. Uh, of course, you could use a normal fingering white yarn and hold, hold it single. That will make the sweater uh, just perfectly the same and also more affordable, uh, let's be honest, <laughs> especially if you're getting hand-dyed yarn like the Helix uh, from La Bien Aimée. But, um, you know, there are other uh, lace weights that are uh, commercial, that are good quality. I would just suggest getting a wool one. Um, if you want to hold it double like this. But if not, you could use a fingering weight yarn or you could use double it, not with itself, but with a more hair. And I'm quite curious as to how this would look. Basically, you would have one strand of each color in your main uh, lace weight yarn. So uh, either uh, something like Helix from La Bien Aimée, if you want to get it, which again, I've, I've talked about it a lot in last episode. I absolutely adore this yarn. It's really beautiful. The blend of Falkland and Gotland is one of the best thing ever. I really, really wish to find thicker yarn with this exact composition as well, because I love it. Um, every designer who is currently working with this yarn loves it. And yes, uh, I have to agree that it's like, it's a brilliant yarn. So you could use one strand of a lace weight yarn, your main yarn, and then find a mohair that match the color of each of the colors, basically. So I would take, for example, a dark green mohair and then a light blue mohair, uh, either from the same, uh, it may has mohair, obviously, or from like another commercial mohair, if you want that. And have your sweater done like that and it will look different the color work in my hair will look a bit fluffier a bit more muted but that's interesting and uh, if that's a look that you might like that's i think something interesting to look for and now the thing is for the marled effect on the seed stitch what's really uh, convenient is that you can do it still even if you're not holding the yarn with itself. So if you're either using just one strand of fingering weight for each color or like the mohair every time, for the hem what you could do is um, like knit one row in one color and the next row in another color and you're gonna have a dotted effect that is re going to resemble the marred look. So that was important for me because I wanted the sweater to match the properties of Emmy's yarn, right? Because she contacted me for a collaboration. So I wanted to 
use it to its potential, which is why I did this marred effect. But I didn't want um, people who would use different yarn or that would not have doubled the yarn like I did. I didn't want them to be stuck into uh, doing, not being able to get the same thing. Um, so yeah, that's why I chose seat, seat stitch because the dotted texture of the pearl stitches is gonna allow you to have a similar effect if you change color every row for the seat stitch uh, in this design. So that was a lot of information, lots and lots of information for this design. But yes, I um, I am really really happy with it. It was a bit difficult to grade and put all together. I hope that I did it right and that I'm not going to encounter um, mishaps <laughs> as I finish the complicated part, which is the here, basically. But it's complicated for me because I have to make sure the design works. But um, yeah, the advantage of this type of bottom-up sweater is that first the fit doesn't matter so much because like I said it's a very uh, loose positive is drop shoulder so you don't need it to be perfect to the millimeter <laughs> you know um, and the thing is you cast on and you have the whole body to knit in a rather meditative smooth way you don't have to think about doing anything uh, while you're doing it and so that's good the only um, the only little challenge in this design is gonna be the upper body which is gonna be you know like 15 centimeter 15 to 20 centimeters of handling the little sticks but uh, I'm recording tutorials for that and you know it's nothing nothing complicated at all so I hope it's gonna make a good overall um, knit and um, yeah we would like to release this at the end of April for a yarn show that Emma is attending maybe I'm saying too much uh, but um, this means that I need to hurry and to start test knitting it soon so yeah, in case you're interested in test knitting this design, and again, I know it may looks, it may look scary. It is not. It is not complicated. Um, yeah, in case you're interested in test knitting this design, keep your eyes open. Uh, send me your email if you want to be notified when the test calls uh, happens, because I'm gonna need testers for it. And yeah, uh, I'm not gonna ask people to complete the sweater completely because it's too rushed and I don't have the full time period that I would like. So if I can make the test call for it sometime soon, <laughs> um, I will uh, only ask that you finish the body because that's what I need to make sure that it's okay. Uh, yeah, that you, people finish the body and cut the sticks and uh, see if it's all good and from now on that would be okay. But yes, I need to hurry up a little bit and um, finish, like I mean, advance mine so that it's at a state where I can ask for testers. So yeah, that's what's happening with me at the moment. I have found a name uh, which I'm not going to give to you because I want Amy to approve it uh, even though I don't think she wants it to be named in a particular way but just in case um, I have found a name which I am really proud of I will say uh, I say that and then you're gonna learn the name and you're gonna be like it's so silly anyway and don't get overhyped um, but yes these are my projects at the moment I have said everything I wanted to say and I have actually talked so much and gone into so many tangents that this is very long. Okay, but yes. Um, that's all I had to say for this episode. In case you are interested in to coming to a yarn festival at the beginning of April in France, the Knit Eat Festival in Lyon 
is happening uh, uh, on the 4 and 5, 5th of April. In, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be great, lots of lovely people, lots of lovely food, amazing, amazing festival, I've already said it. I just wanted to say that in the next week or so, I'm gonna have a giveaway to uh, have you um, give you some entries. So keep an eye on Instagram, just in case, uh, in case you would like to enter that giveaway. Uh, I think I will have another podcast episode up by then. But just in case you you would be interested into getting to know this festival. Um, so yeah, it's neat eat, as in food, not big clown. There is actually a huge spider. Spoilers. Um, yes. Uh, I... Oh God. I think that's the first time I record the podcast in the afternoon, so I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit out of order, <laughs> so to say. But yes, um, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in a couple of weeks, I think.